Good afternoon, witches. Alison here, aka Avalon Moon 91, and I'm your host for Thursdays on our Pagan Opinions. And today's topic was craft books, and the first craft book we ever read, and has it influenced the way we practice now? And the first book that I had ever bought as a teenager, and I believe I may have been 14, was To Ride a Silver Broomstick by Silver Raven Wolf. Now, I don't actually have that particular book anymore, but I do have this one. To Stir a Magic Cauldron, which is very, very much the same. Um, I do remember paying about $35 for it at, at our local New Age store. And what attracted me to this particular publication was the amount of words like conjuring, casting, triggers, salutes, more conjuring, conjuring, magic, major mag magic, um, casting circles. The, the words casting and conjuring are very powerful, especially to somebody who is new to their craft and looking for a sense of belonging, a sense of power within their own lives. And I think that's what attracts a lot of newcomers to, especially young newcomers to the path. Um, and I must admit that I do believe that Silver Raven Wolf is a very, very smart marketer, um, but I don't find that I have taken anything away from her books that influences the way I practice now. If anything, it is just to be open-minded to all possibilities and that anything is possible, but believe very little of what you read in this book um, or any of her books um, and only what you know to be truth through your own eyes and what you've experienced through your own practice. Um, the only thing that I remember actually taking from the original publication that I had read was um, the weather working. And I remember I was having a, a sleepover at a friend's and we were lying on the lounge room floor and I was absolutely enthralled in my book, reading and reading and reading. And I came to a chapter of weather working and Miss Ravenwolf goes on to say that she was, as far as I can remember, it was a very long time ago, buying groceries and it was raining and she needed to get to the car. So she willed the rain to stop long enough to put her groceries in the car and then off she went. And you know, when I think about that now, I think about her driving off into the sunset with a, um, a beautiful song playing in the background. It doesn't happen like that. Um, and this is where I find that she's a very smart marketer because teenagers especially, not certainly not all teenagers, but many teenagers can be very, very gullible. And when they read that, they do believe that these powers can be more or less you know, if you focus for five minutes, you can draw on these energies and poof, change the weather like that. And it's it's not possible. So I think books by Silver Raven Wolf, particularly to ride... Excuse me. Will you stop it? You do it every video. Come here. You're a naughty boy. Not you, you smell. We both smell. Go. Um such a distraction, particularly to ride a silver broomstick, to stir a magic cauldron and to light a sacred flame, I believe may be the other one, but I could be wrong. Um, if you read any three, any or all three of them, they're basically the same, the same rubbish printed over and over and over again. Um, when I look back through this, You know, they, obviously they are just generated for teenagers. We talk about projects and the ancestral circle of the sands and casting of the circle mist. Um, things that I've only ever read about in Silver Ravenwood publications. A lot of what I read in these books is not stuff that I've read anywhere else. Um, and I find it very, very, very fanciful and inviting for teenagers. And it's more or less just very watered down, sugar coated. Um, garble to, to draw teenagers in to make them think that following this path is something that it isn't, that it's easy and you can just do this and you can do that and you can put a little bit of glitter in here and poof, you're a witch and it's not like that. Um, I really do believe that what she presents with her publications isn't to take the path necessarily seriously, it's just that to encourage people to become practitioners of witchcraft and to help popularise witchcraft once again. I don't really believe that she's doing it because she's really looking to to use her books 
as a tool for spiritual solace and for those really looking for spiritual solace and spiritual enlightenment she's just looking to draw in the readers and have more people coming out as witches um, I also don't like in her publications the way she bashes Christians um, I don't agree with this I won't say that it's wrong each to their own if you if you don't agree with Christians and what they do that's your choice um, but personally we all know what happened in the past um, and what's in the past is in the past so it can be left there there's no need to continually keep bashing on the Christians for what's happened in the past um, I very rarely through any of my channels have Christians bashing at me um, they're entitled to have their opinion as a we so why can that not just be left the way it is I don't understand why um, it's actually not this book it's Teen Witch um, another book that I had bought actually last year to do a review on and within the first, I think, three or four pages, she more or less gives the Christians quite a big bashing in her publication. And it really put me off reading the rest um, because I don't think the way to draw in a crowd or potentially draw in newcomers to a path is to bash opposing religious paths in order to make yours seem more superior. Um, I don't agree with that. So anyway, um, her works have done very little. Um, I've taken very little reflection of them on how I practice my path now. I keep this one on my bookshelf. I also have Teen Witch because I paid about $30 for that one too and I didn't even finish reading the whole thing. And the one that I can say that I really don't mind and if you are a newcomer to Wicca or Witchcraft, whatever you define yourself as, and you are looking for just one book with a wealth of information and it's not necessarily completely well-researched, structured information, but it gives you a basis on which to go by, and then you can certainly reference more online or through other publications if you want, is The Ultimate Book of Shadows by Silver Raven Wolf. It's about four or five hundred pages, as far as I know, and it references over just about everything, from tarot to alchemy, all different forms of use, divination, pendulums, how to cast a circle, the elements, everything. And I really don't find that that book is a bad book, especially for teenagers, because it is like a huge big encyclopedia. And I found that there's not too much Christian bashing in that one either. But these ones, um, if you can avoid reading these ones and you're a newcomer to the path, I would recommend to do that because they are nothing, nothing but, and I don't dislike Silver Raven Wolf, but they're nothing but just... Um, just garble for the masses is the only way that I can put it, um, to be quite frank about it. Um, you know, the triad focus. and There is some, you know, choosing a, a, a patron god and goddess, um, but a lot of it's, you know, planetary aspects, celestial workings, um, and the word magic, magic, magic is used in every single page of this book, magic, spell, magic. So it just really is a draw card of heavily used, particularly heavily used words being conjure, spellcraft, magic, to really draw that reader in, like I said. Um, so look, if I could have my time again, I probably would have been better off to choose another author. But at the time, this, this, these books, the colouring, the pretty picture on the front, the use of the word conjure, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times on the back of the book, also helped as a 14-year-old to draw me in. And at that time, I really did believe that I could just snap my fingers and change the weather. I really did believe that I could invoke the spirit um, by reading this book. And I was sadly mistaken and probably was just as disappointed then as I am now when I flick through it and see, you know, little decorations of stars and flowers so um, you'd be better if you you are starting out in the path and you're completely new to it you know start with the easy stuff you know if you're, if you're looking to become Wiccan you know Scott Cunningham simple not necessarily fun to read but it's simple it's precise and it will give you a good foundation of what you're looking at um, I don't have a lot of... Actually, I do have a few Wiccan books, come to think of it. I'm trying to think of other Wiccan authors. Raymond Buckland. 
know, I'm trying to think of things for teens that are really easy to read at the moment. Um, and, and that's in a structured form, but still simple enough to read without confusion. Um, but I'm sure if, if anybody else has any publications, so I'm just having a complete memory blank at the moment, just put them down in the comments section. Um, I'm sure that there will be, there are many, many authors with many, many books these days, so much so that, you know, we'll start having um, wicker stands on street corners soon because there are just so many books coming out these days that just keep telling you the same information over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. But on that note, um, Silver Ravenwolf, bow bow, I give a thumbs down. Um, if you're new, don't read these books because while they may be fun and while they may encourage you and tell you that you can conjure, 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 you can't just conjure like that. You have to understand what you're doing before you can start conjuring spellcrafting and making real magic. And to make real magic isn't always about spellcrafting and conjuring. It's about just sitting out in the elements and trusting yourself and... Let's go for a little walk. Excuse me in my gum boots. It's not really the best look. Look at that. Woohoo. Cool. Okay, I'm just going to look through the hay. Oh, excuse the big truck in the front yard, but that's the beauty of nature. That's magic. Just in itself. Conjuring the essence of the divine. And the beauty of the divine. So, on that note, many blessings to all. And I will see you for next week's topic. Bye.